You know, there is a right way and a wrong way to raise your quail, and some of the things that you're doing wrong. Hold on, you, hold on. You're doing everything wrong. Zach, what do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? What, Zach, what are you doing? Well, you're feeding what, the wrong feed. I, I can't be feeding the wrong feed. You're, I'm, what are I, you I, feeding? I feed, no, I feed a game bird feed, a 30% game bird Why feed. Why are you to feeding them all. your layers that's 30%? Just, that's what they eat, man. They, they just do great what on it. What about the extra calcium so, they need? Yeah, well, they get uh, about a 2% calcium level in there, so that's, that's about right for the quails, so. All right, well, we can yep. agree to disagree. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to another Slightly Redneck video. Again, my name's Chris, and you guys probably all know Zach from My Shire Farm. He was on a trip through to pick up some supplies, stopped back by because I was kind of on the way, and we thought we'd shoot a quick video here and just talk to you guys about, you know, what some of the misinformation you may be hearing, or not necessarily misinformation, but different information you may be hearing from different sources. So what do you, what do you think about that? Absolutely, I think that's a great idea. There's many different ways to raise quail, many yeah. different whole lot. I do it a lot differently than Zach does. Mm -hmm. So talk about kind of your setup because they, they all know mine. I mean, everybody sure. on my channel knows mine. Sure. Yeah. And if I was raising just for self-sufficient use, this is perfect. Mm -hmm. Absolutely perfect. Uh, I kind of transitioned away from that and I have more of a business side. Um, so there's some things that I just do differently and that's okay because yep, we can all, we can all do things a little bit different. Uh, location changes some things. Yep. Um, you know the economy around us just the climate around us everything changes so the outside cages are awesome it just wouldn't work for me no for you're raising way higher numbers than i am sure, how many quail absolutely. do you have right now do you know about 6400 6400 compared to i've got 30 30 i think right so now it's a little bit so, different a little bit different right <laughs> that's that's one thing that's different also you know, you mentioned you're raising them for a business for business purposes. Mm -hmm. So you're selling eggs, you're selling live quail too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you sell live quail as well, and because you're doing that, you have to pay a lot more attention to really perfecting the genetics, perfecting the you know getting the biggest egg size you can, the biggest sure. bird size you can, all those kinds of things because that is a business. You right. know, if you're if you're just raising for yourself, I mean, you can definitely go through all those steps. Um, I know you switch your feet up uh, whenever they, they what, what's your... About eight, well, if it's colors, then I do it about eight weeks. Mm -hmm. If it's jumbos, it's 10 to 11 weeks. So you, we transition. You feed a, a game bird feed, feed up until that point, and yeah, then we you feed switch a, to... Um, we actually feed a pheasant starter, which is kind of like a Same game bird starter. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we feed that up to, you know, no matter whether it's a color or a jumbo. And then we switch over to a Caternix layer that we actually specially blend. We made. Right. Um, which has higher calcium and we really focus on you know egg production because there's no reason to have 6500 quail if you're only right. getting a thousand eggs a day like sure I'm doing sure. something so we we focus on that we focus on uh, egg size we hatch out I don't know anywhere from 440 to 1200 a week I mean it really does vary on time of year yep, that makes um, sense. so we're, we're doing a lot of different things that we didn't do when we first started yeah. So it, it's a completely different ballgame. Yeah, but but again, you're focused on it from a business perspective, making sure that your customers get the absolute best product they can get. Sure. So that makes sense why you do that. Now, yeah. if you're just raising for yourself, you can definitely go through those steps if you want to. And uh, what I say, nerd out on it in a sense, which is not a bad thing. Um, if you want to really, uh, you know, make it, make it, I shouldn't say more complicated, but if you want to go through the steps of switching their feed up and all those things to make the absolute best possible, you know, mix of feed for them and all the all the stuff that Zach does, then there's no reason you shouldn't do that. But you don't necessarily have to do that either. You right. can get away with simple setup like I have right here. I feed all my birds a game bird starter, a 30% game bird starter. Actually, I think I'm doing 26% right now because I haven't been able to get to the feed store that has 30%. Mm -hmm. Picked it up at a different feed store, um, and my you know my daily uh, chores with my quail is about 15 minutes a day. I just make sure they have water. I make sure they have feed, and that's really about all I got to do. So it's pretty simple. I got to clean up underneath the hutches about once a year. Mm -hmm. That's about it for me. So it's pretty simple, straightforward for me. But if you want to go more complex and you want to um, you know. Uh, monitor their calcium levels and all those kinds of things then there's no reason you shouldn't do all that I mean you can sure. absolutely yeah but if just, you, again I I completely agree though I mean if you're just raising for self-sufficient use then there's really no reason to do all of that right you know let me do it for you you know and then right. you just raise them and collect the eggs right yeah um, you know and like I love his hutch I love the hutch in fact I've got I've had three customers in the past week message me saying that they built 
punch your style. Like yeah, just like this, uh, and they love it. This would not work for me because it's not a lay, uh, uh, a stacking a, a, cage. Right? Well, it's not a a, a rollout. A rollout, rollout cage. Yeah, right. right. I got you. So me having to get into every cage to collect the eggs. I mean, that's a lot of eggs and a lot of cages, so that just wouldn't work for me. But, again, if you're only collecting every couple of days or you're feeding inside there anyway, it's really not a big deal. Uh, so there's there's many different ways to do it. You know, I've tried a rollout cage before. I've got a couple of stacking cages over here. I can show you here in a minute. But okay. They may have seen them or not. I had videos on it at one time. Um, they're still sitting over here. I don't use them anymore because what I didn't like about my stacking cages and the rollout eggs is that um, everything that I put inside the cage ends up right at the front of the cage to the door. You right. know? So um, the feeders, the everything. And, and, sure. and it's to me, you know, I'm collecting, they're not even laying right now because I don't have the lights on it. But when they are laying, I'm collecting a dozen eggs a day. It's not that big a deal for me to open the hutch up, grab a couple of, you know, a dozen eggs out of there. I usually just stuff them in my pocket. Sure. Hope I remember to take them out and don't go to work <laughs> with them in my pockets, which right. has happened before. But um, it's not that big a deal for me. But if it, if it was, you know, 40, 50 cages, that's a different story, you know, sure. or even, I mean, good grief, you have, I don't know how many cages. Do I think 70. Know? 70? 68. 68, it looks like more than that. It but. does look like more. <laughs> yeah. They're big. They're yeah. big cages. They are much bigger than my cages <laughs> are, so. Uh, what, what else do you think, that? what do you hear from different uh, people for, that they, they hear different, from different sources, I should say? Um, well, here's a good one. So you use the little giant incubator. I do. Okay. Mm -hmm. I can't stand them. Yeah. But we just did a review on it. I saw it. And I had a great hatch. And yeah. I went, I can't believe it. Yeah. So I've always said, oh, GQF is amazing. The Hovabator is great. I had a horrible hatch and experience with that. Yeah. But the little giant was just amazing. Right. Now we just tried a still layer, and a lot of people like the still layer. It's not for me. I don't like it. I don't, I don't like, like the still layer either. No, I, I like the circulated fan or the circulated air. I like the fan in it. And uh, so, I, again, it's just a lot of different. Yeah. Just, I'll tell you, depends. you know why I use a little giant incubator? Because um, I bought that incubator, good grief, it's been almost 10 years ago probably. And at the time, th there wasn't a lot of choices out right. there for incubators. And sure. it was one I could get locally. And it hasn't broken. So right. that's why, I, I mean, it still works. Right. It Don't did, fix it it did it break. I will tell you this. There is. There was one time where it did break. Um, I had the thermostat go out on the heating unit. And I called uh, Miller Manufacturing, that's the company that makes mm -hmm. it, and they they didn't ask me like when did you buy it, N nothing. They just said okay and shipped me out a brand new thermostat within it was like two days. I got it in the mail. Nice. So you know they got good customer service, so I don't have to say that for them. Sure. And um, you know it's not the you know it may not be the absolute best incubator out there, but it I works. can if I really pay attention and really like I say nerd out on my hatches when I do it. Sure. I can get an 80, 90 percent hatch rate out of them right. a lot of times. Yeah, and I agree. Uh, I mean, I and it, it, it works. Yeah, we so. did it mid of winter in the barn didn't really manage it that well but we managed it enough and we yep. still had an amazing hatch and i was like oh okay all right yeah. my bad <laughs> so i think it just i think everybody's different and i think when you start you just kind of get things in your head and you go this is this just works for me so something right. else might work just fine but this is the way you want to go Yep. You know what I mean? I'm going to put you on the spot here if you don't mind. I'm going to okay. ask you a couple of questions I get from viewers all the time that I don't really have a good answer for. Okay. So one would be, what about fodder for quail? Have you ever thought about growing fodder for your quail? Have you ever tried it? Do you know anything about it? I do. There's a couple good videos out there that I've seen. Um, don't know who they were from at this moment. Yeah. Uh, but fodder is a great idea. Yeah. And if you can do it and you have time to do it, I think you should. Yeah. It wouldn't work for me. Yeah, that's my problem too. <laughs> I don't. Know? I mean, I, I've got 15 minutes a day in these birds, right. and doing fodder is going to be a couple hours a day. Well, probably not an hour. I mean, you can do fodder fairly simply, but um, it's still going to be more time involved. Right. Absolutely. And that's the same thing with you know people wanting to use a cheaper feed, but supplement that with mealworms or uh, oyster yeah. shells or something like that. That's fine, and that'll work. It's just a lot more work. Yeah. And I don't have that time. Right. So exactly. again, there's many different ways to raise yeah. raise quail. But yeah, yeah I I've think heard fodder's of, a great um, idea. People that can't find um, and that's another question I guess that comes up. If you can't find a, a decent percent like a, a higher percentage, because even your your uh, your um, adult feed that you feed your birds, mm -hmm. what percentage of protein is that, you know? Sixteen. Sixteen, okay. That's so that's pretty low protein. Yeah, it's pretty really. low, yeah. Um, so a lot of people are looking to get a higher protein in their feed. Yeah, and I can tell you, when we started, we used a turkey starter because that's very easy to find. And it's pretty much the same thing. And it's pretty much the same thing. Mm -hmm. Works great. And if I wasn't running the business, 
I'd be using a turkey starter because yeah. it's not worth it's not worth what I use except for I'm doing very large. Right, exactly. Amounts. You're not raising for yourself. Right. You're raising so for, turkey yeah. starters really, and then we were using just a general layer feed, and it worked great. Now we're like getting a chicken better. layer feeder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just okay. an all-purpose chicken there, layer feed. I've had some questions about that too. People wondering if they can feed a chicken layer feed. I've always said, yeah, you can feed it. It may not be the absolute best, but it, they're going to do fine on it. Well, I and do have the numbers, problem. and for some reason they stuck in my brain. Yeah. So we actually, when we went from the general layer feed to a game bird layer feed, because we did that first, mm -hmm. I think we increased production by about 14%. It was egg right on production. Under, our egg production. Yeah. Yep. Egg production about, I think it was 13 or 14%. When we decided to make our own feed, because game bird feed is still a seasonal layer bird. You know, game mm -hmm. birds are more bob whites, you know, chuckers, things like that. Sure. So when we decided to make an actual Caternix blend, it went up another 15%. Interesting. Again, if you're only raising 10, 15, 20 quail, you're not gonna notice much worth of a difference, spending right? that extra money for one or two eggs a day? Yeah. No. So I, I can tell you, um, you know, I feed a, a high protein game bird feed mm -hmm. at 30 percent. It's 1.5, 2 percent calcium, somewhere right around in there. Okay. Um, I don't have any problems with soft shells or, or any of that kind of stuff. I mean, sometimes when the birds first start laying, you know, they sure. lay some weird eggs, but not any consistent problems with Long soft term. shells. And I can, if I've got lights on these guys, I can get an egg a day out of almost every bird, and that's pretty consistent up until usually around uh, this time of year, mid-December to about mid-January, even with lights on them, they do tend to quit laying. Okay. But they're outside and it's the short days. Mm -hmm. um, but I can usually get an egg a day out of them. They do pretty good up to about almost two years, not quite, probably a year and a half. Okay. Roughly. Okay. Um, and then they'll start slowing down and, and going off. And that might be a thing too, because we've increased our production to about, the jumbos are around a year and nine months when they mm -hmm. start dropping off. Yeah. And they start going from five or six eggs a day to three or four eggs a day. Um, and then we've got like rosettas and things like that that usually lay about two years and, th yeah, and three months. Yeah, you don't mean, months. just to clarify too, you don't mean five or six eggs a day per bird. No. Yeah, no, right. no bird is going to lay right. five or six I'm eggs a day. I'm saying for a breeder set. Right. <laughs> right, 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 for a breeder yeah. set. But uh, anyway, so yeah, we, we, I mean, we do things differently, but there's different reasons why we do it differently. And if you're hearing different advice from different people, um, the, the only thing I would say is a, a caution against that is if the person says, you know, like my way is the only way to do it. This is the absolute, you know, way because right. th there's a lot of different ways to do it. Even advice that I give on my channel, you may hear something different like from Zach, for example, that's Absolutely. contradictory. It doesn't mean either one of us are wrong necessarily. It's just we have a different focus on it. That's all it sure. is to it. And you could follow either one of us, both of us. You know, take take whichever works from either one of us. Use it and, and, and use it however you want to. Well, or come up with your own stuff. Yeah, that's usually when people become at their best when they listen to different points of view and go, "Okay, yeah, I'm gonna just mesh them together, and right. this is how I'm gonna do it." And that's usually the recipe for success. Yep. Now there are some things out there that are just, you know, like yeah, they're you can absolute, determine. You're right. Yeah, like you can determine a, a hen from a male from the egg shape. That's, right. That's much no. That's if not true. you could do that, I would be rich. Yeah, exactly. Can't yeah. do it. I'd love to. I, I uh, just never had <laughs> any males. That's just it doesn't happen. I did a, a video on that a long time ago where there was a, there's an old wives' tale about the heat of your incubator. If you raise yeah. the temperature a little bit, and it it will it will make you uh, produce more hens. Mm -hmm. And and if you lower, I can't remember. I may be getting it backwards. Um, if you lower it, it's more prone to to give you more. Uh, roosters, uh, right. maybe it's backwards, either way, but it's not really that it, it doesn't change the sex of the egg, it just means that your roosters are more likely to hatch, your hens are more likely to die in the in the egg, or sure. vice right. versa. So yeah, you can get a little bit more of, you know, one gender from your hatch, but you're you're losing, you're sacrificing all the rest. Right. It's not a, a change. So. Right. Yeah, and we really still, I mean, uh, we are a business, but we still focus on the self-sufficient aspect for a bunch of people. Sure. And so, you know, there's nothing wrong with having extra males. That's just more meat on the table. No, absolutely. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, so. I don't mind the extra males at all. Right. Yeah. yeah. As long as I get, you know, a dozen hens out of the hatch, I'm fine. That's all I need. Right. You know, the absolutely. rest of them, it's all a meat run anyway, usually. So yeah. it's but fine. Yeah, I agree. For the most part, there's a million different ways to raise quail, and there's not one right way and one wrong way. Yep, I absolutely agree. Well, we're running a little bit long. I guess we should probably wrap this video up. Zach, thank you so much for stopping by. Thanks I appreciate for letting me it. come by. And, uh, 
You guys, if you don't know Zach already, go check out his channel at MyShire Farm. Your, your channel name is MyShire Farm, right? Yes, yeah. it is. I thought it was. I watch your videos all the time. I should know that. <laughs> uh, but go check it out. Uh, see what he's doing. He's doing a lot of great things. 18 and under contests where they giveaways. Uh, I mean, all kinds of cool stuff over there. So definitely worth checking out. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, God bless. Thanks.